Pacific bluefin tuna are truly an amazing species. Here, I'm lucky enough to swim with some bluefin in a pen where they are caught, fed, and sold to market. Pacific bluefin spawn mostly in the Western Pacific around Japan and the Philippines, and at some point in their lives, in their first year or later, they make their way to the Eastern Pacific. Large-scale tagging studies of Pacific bluefin, like those performed by the TOP program, the Tagging of Pacific Predators, have shown us that bluefin migrate back and forth across the Pacific Ocean. In 2011, a tsunami caused by an earthquake near Japan caused a massive spill of radiocesium into the ocean from the Fukushima power plant. We know that much, much sea life was contaminated by cesium around the Fukushima spill. With limited expectations due to their foraging far from shore and the concentration of most of the radiocesium near the coast of Japan, we went ahead and collected 15 bluefin in, the, in August of 2011 and the results that we obtained when testing for radiocesium in the tissue of these bluefin were quite surprising. Tuna fish lovers and sushi eaters in particular may be getting something extra with their meal like a dose of radioactivity. Scientists say the mighty bluefin tuna carried radioactive contamination that leaked from Japan's crippled nuclear plant to the shores of the U.S. 6,000 miles away. Every single one of the 15 bluefin that we analyzed was radioactive with comparable levels. Our findings in Pacific bluefin tuna caused fear among sushi lovers, but it turned out the values were far below established safety limits. But what about other types of tuna, like the kind that end up in the cans on your supermarket shelves? And the bigger question is, how many other animals use the waters off Japan and then migrate great distances to other ecosystems in the Pacific? The answer is a lot, and a lot of those species end up on your plate. Albacore tuna, salmon, swordfish, as well as certain types of sharks, like mako sharks and blue sharks, all make long migrations, some definitely from Japan, some less known, and many of these end up on your plate, either at sushi restaurants or in supermarkets. This means that a wide variety of pelagic taxa may make their way from Japan to other regions of the Pacific Ocean carrying radiocesium from Fukushima. In addition, other animals in the Pacific that are less consumed by humans, but of interest due to their ecological roles and their conservation status, make their way from Japan to other vast regions of the Pacific, including seabirds like the albatross and shearwater, certain sea turtles, and certain species of whale, as well, as well as other shark and fish species. We'll study as many highly migratory pelagic species as we can. Here I'm sampling opa and mako shark on a recent study cruise to look at radio season in these animals. We hope that you find an interest in a specific study animal and wish to contribute towards the understanding of that animal's migratory patterns and the extent to which that animal carried radioactivity from Japan to far reaches of the Pacific Ocean. So all 15 bluefin tuna measured in 2011 carried radio cesium from Japan to the California current. We're going to sample a lot more Pacific bluefin in 2012, but what other species carried radio cesium from Japan to other regions of the Pacific Ocean? We don't know, and that's one of the most exciting situations in science. We're hoping you take interest in one or more of the species we plan to look at here. Other tunas, whales, sea turtles, swordfish, and shark species, and help us, through your funding, to look at these animals and get a more comprehensive picture of how the long, impressive, migratory trips these animals in the Pacific take carry radiocesium from Japan's nuclear disaster to far, far reaches 